Hello and welcome to Physics Problems One by One. So here is a problem. As always, read it, maybe once, maybe twice, and then pause the video and try to solve it yourself. So let's continue with this 101 on quadratic functions. So we let's analyze the case. Of course, A is always not equal zero, right? Or if you want this notation, always not equal zero. We analyzed when C equals zero, when both B and C equal zero, when B equals zero but C is not. Let's analyze the case when C is zero but B is not equal to zero. For example, let's solve this. How to solve this? It's Pause, and of course you got it right. We can take x out and say x minus 5 equals 0. This would be a good way of solving this. And then we can say we have two cases. One case, this is equal 0, and we have x1 equals 0. And another case, this is equal to 0. X minus 5 equals 0, x2 equals 5. Again, we have two solutions for quadratic equation. And that's very good. So let's check how it relates to this generic formula. We have to write x1 divided over 2a. a is 1, so a is 1, minus b b is minus 5, so here a equal 1, and but b is equal minus 5. Just by looking what's standing in front of it, in front of it instead is a, and a is obviously 1. Here in front is minus 5, so b is equal minus 5. So, minus b, this formula you should already remember, minus, minus it would be minus 5, plus minus 25, right? Because it would be b squared minus 5 squared, it would be 25, minus 4ac. c is 0, so minus 0. And so x12 equals 2 at the bottom, 5 here, plus minus 5, because square root of 25 is 5, and x12 equals 5 minus 5 over 2, x1, and this becomes 0. And x2 becomes 5 plus 5. 5 plus 5 over 2 becomes 5. So exactly what we got here, this and this. And we of course got this and this, which is the same. So, two ways of solving this. Tell me what's easier. Of course, this is easier. We factor out. We factor out. X. And we. Got this solution. By the way, here is mistake that's very easy to do with this. And I will show you like they do it in many, many problems. x squared equals 5x. And then they say, let's get rid of x. So we have x equals 5. And this is our solution. And that's wrong. Because you cannot divide. Uh, you always say get rid. That means actually that you divide. You say, let's divide this by x and this over x, right? This is the same like to say, and then we have x equal 5. This and this and this and this and we have this. Or, or, like this mnemonic that I always use, x squared equal, equal 5. And I send this x from here to here, and here I have 1. And again I have x equal 5. But it's all wrong. Why is this wrong? Because you cannot divide if x equals 0. 
So, basically, you can do this, no problem. You can move it like that. It's, of course, always valid because you add 5x to both sides. You add 5x here and 5x there, and it's exactly like moving this over here. But sending x to the bottom possible only if x not equal to 0. Then, of course, you can divide and you immediately have x equal 5, and it's your first case. And this is your first solution. Second solution, you can say, oh, what if x equals 0? Then you have to verify this. And you have 0 equals 0 and x equals 0 means the solution. But you cannot simply, so we again receive 2, 5, 2 roots, 5 and 0. But if you simply divide or cancel out and say this, then x equals 0 is lost. And it lost exactly in this transformation where you send x to the bottom, you divide, divide over x. You divide left side and right side, but divide over 0, is impossible, right? And if division of a zero is impossible, to that's you and you ignore it, you get all kind of weird stuff. All kind of weird stuff. Uh, anyway, we have this x squared. Let's go with the function. We now know how to solve it, and we solved it, but now let's go with the same function. And what can we say? Of course it would be the same parabola, because this is squared, this is single, and there is no c, but who cares? We know that as soon as this is squared, this will be a parabola. And let's say we take x very big, 10 million, 100 million, this would be the most important part because 10 million multiplied by 10 million, this will be negligible. Or we'll take minus 10, minus 10 millions. That means that if x is going, this will be very, very, and it will be growing. And if x is going this way, it would be growing again. So we know that branches are up. Branches up. Parabola is opens up. And why? Because a equal 1 and a is greater than 0. So this is the rule that always says that you have to kind of be comfortable with. If what is standing in front of your squared variable is positive, branches are going up. Okay? And likewise, if it would be negative, branches are going down. And it cannot be zero, because if this is zero, this is disappearing, and it's not quadratic equation, it's linear function. Straight linear function. Okay, so we know that this, and we know that this is the root. Zero is the root, and five is the root. Okay, so it will go like this, and we also know that parabola is symmetrical. And because it is symmetrical, it goes like this, and this is 2.5. So, you have, to, you know that it is 2.5, and to determine the minimum, the apex, all you have to do, all you have to do, you have to put this 2.5 and plug it here. So you will get 2.5 squared minus 5 multiplied by 2.5. And what it will be? 2.5 squared is 625. You can use your calculator. F5 over 2.5 would be 125. Uh, 5 over uh, 5 over 2.5 is actually 12. 12 and a half. 5 over 2 would be 10 and then so 12 and a half. My mistake. And this result would be 6 minus 12 and a half. It would be minus 625. 
And so you know that this is your apex, minus 625. So, let me do it again. We have this case where c equals 0, for example, let's write it down, minus 3 uh, x squared minus 9, and this is y over x. Well, first let's try to find the solution. Solution would be uh, equation minus 3x squared minus 9 equals 0. Right? Oh, minus 9x. I forgot. Minus 9x. I feel something is wrong. Okay, so 3x squared minus 9, because if it would be 3x squared minus 9, it will always be negative. This is negative, this is negative. The graph would be this, right? And this would be minus 9. And this would be apex. And we talked about in the previous problem. But it's not what I'm discussing here. It's just because I made a typo. I look on this and I don't understand what's going on. So, you may be very confused. So, this is confusion is resolved. So, now we're solving this equation. So, how? For example, we take minus 3, we take x, we have x plus 3 equals 0. Now, we can divide over minus, minus 1. We divide over minus 1, this would be 0, and this would be 3, x, x plus 3 equals 0. And we can divide over 3, it still will be 0 over 3, over sense 3 here, because any number, positive, negative, we can send from here to this denominator easily or we can simply divide over 3 and nothing will happen unless this is 0. But 3 is not 0, so we can do it easily. x plus 3 equals 0 and we have x1 equals 0. The first possibility is that multiplication of two numbers give us 0. This is the first. And the second is x plus 3 equals 0, this bracket is 0, and then we have x2 equals minus 3. So we have 0 and minus 3 are our solution. We can use this, but I'm not using this because it's more complicated than that, and it is very simple. And now let's build the graph. y x equals minus 3 x squared minus 9 x. And we want to build this graph, and we start with this, with this, with this, and we put our... And first of all, we say where parabola will go. Of course, if x would be very big number, I don't know, thousand. This would be thousand squared. Thousand squared is a million. It would be minus three million. And this would be only uh, minus nine thousand. So million is so much more than thousand, then this would be the most important part that contributes to this value. So if x is big, this would be negative, and this is all determined by this sign. a equal minus 3 and it's less than 0, parable is directed down, like that. Okay? Now I have to put the numbers. The roots, this is the first root, and minus 3 is the second root. So, that's become wrong, not because it's directed down wrong, it's still directed down, but it is shifted to the left. And this would be the solution, and this would be minus 1.5, and we can plug minus... My y equal minus 3 y minus 1.5 squared minus over minus would be 9 over 1.5 and I suggest you will do it but it would be some positive number somewhere here this would be this value right I don't want to spend time on this 
basically the bottom line what that means the case where c equals zero first of all a still determines up or down if a what's standing in front of x squared is positive parabola is opens up if this number is negative parabola is opens down so a the sign I should write sign of a see I'm not good at lectures if you like them sign of a determines d it determines direction of up or down and b determines shift left or right so remember we have x squared minus 5x so if the sign is the same they shift left a and b and if here a equal 1 b equal minus 5 they shift right so the parabola with the same branches for example up is shifted to the right or it may be shifted to the left and this is original y and x so parabola the whole parabola is shifted and also another point is that when we have this form x1 always equals there is always one solution and uh, another solution another solution would be what's standing here right so another solution would be b because with negative sign and another solution x2 equal minus b and so we found and the fourth thing is that uh, the axis of the symmetry is always between those numbers so if this is x and this is y and this is the first root and let's say this is the second root the symmetry axis is always here and then a determines whether we have this picture with negative a or we have this picture with positive a and accordingly this is maximum or this is minimum and it's certainly located in between all right and this is almost all i want to say about this except one observation which is important and this is that if we can come to the situation ax squared plus bx equals zero and we can take x factor it out and we can say that it would be and we can factor a and this would be plus oh sorry x plus b over a equals zero and i can forget about a because a is just a number it's not zero and i can write x minus zero forget about a and presenting x in this shape and here would be x minus minus b a equals zero and that's very important because immediately i have x minus x1 multiplied by x minus x2 equals zero so basically what i did right now i factored I, we, we will not talk about factoring yet and I will talk about this a little bit later but I factor x out and I receive this presentation of the same function so if I forget about zero but I will be dealing with the function the function will look like this uh, I forgot a because I get rid of a when I was solving the equation here I'm not solving the equation I just made the same transformations but basically that means this and this is a fundamental thing because turns out that this formula 
is valid for any kind of polynomial equation. Fourth, fifths, tenths, only there would be number of those squares, like ten roots. And graph would be more complicated, and we will not be talking about this at all. But this factorization is very good thing when you can do it. You not always can do it with a quadratic function. But when c equals 0, you always can do it. There is always two cases, right? Because uh, when c equals 0, you always have two roots. And why? If you look here, discriminant is always b squared. And b squared is always positive. So you always can take square root of a positive number, it would be exactly plus minus b, and you have really here 0 over 2a and 2b over 2a, and b is gone, and you have the result with the proper side. So, that's all that I'm saying, and next time we will be dealing when a, we solved like many cases, we solved both b and c equal 0, we solved b equals 0, c is not equal 0 last time. Now we solved b not 0, c equals 0. And so the next case when a, b, and c all not equal, what will happen? Not much difference in terms of the graph. I can already tell you that the graph will be parabola, that it will be open up and down, it will be shifted left, it will be shifted up. And basically, that's it. And uh, that's enough for this clip. Please subscribe, please bell, please like, question problem, and see you next time. Thank you.